Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first episode of Best Practice in English as a Second Language Instruction. During the next few weeks, we will be covering various aspects of best practice as exemplified in the interactions, understandings, practices, and voices of several primary school teachers. I am Kuldeep Kaur, a teacher educator at the University of Malaya, and I have with me here Lim Pek Chu, who is a, t a lecturer at the University Technology Mara. Stay tuned as during the next half an hour, we will examine the concept of best practice as um, it is realized in the practices of uh, English as a second language teachers um, and, and find its place in instructional purposes. Um, Pekchu, shall we begin with a definition of best practice? Yes. Um, now, best practice, um, the term refers to the instructional, the uh, effective social cultural characteristics in the classroom, as well as the characteristics of the individuals involved in the nature of teaching. In other words, best practice is synonymous with good sound practices as can be seen in the ways of informed practitioners. In the ESL context, English as a second language context, um, best practice also refers to the pre-active, interactive, as well as the post-active dimensions of teaching, as well as the nature of the tasks, the activities and the um, interactions that learners are engaged in in the classroom. In, in other words, you are referring to certain broad principles of teaching and learning. Uh, to illustrate these points, uh, you will see a diagram on your screen in a few moments and we will use this diagram to further talk about uh, and, and uh, expand upon this notion of best practice. First, the definition covers a general description of the social-emotional sphere of influence that teachers and learners bring into the classroom. For example, the professional teacher enjoys her work and she successfully conveys this enthusiasm to her students. The teaching-learning stance that she carries circumscribes her understanding of the different learning abilities, learning styles, as well as the differing needs of her students. As a professional, she nurtures learning by being supportive of the learner's culture and by encouraging and acknowledging learners' contributions in the classrooms. Yeah, I think uh, you've brought in a very important point. I think a teacher should um, nurture the students, all right? And um, it is very important for the teacher to be sensitive to the uh, differing needs and abilities of the students. So, which brings me back to another uh, point for second practice. Um, now, uh, best, sorry, best practice. Best practices also subscribe to the notion of the ever-growing awareness of the nature of teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. So it is very important for the teacher to continually upgrade uh, himself and to uh, be, uh, 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 what do you call that, to engage uh, in ongoing uh, discussions on professional growth and reflective practices. Now, this is important uh, simply because uh, it will be reflected in the interactions that he brings into the classroom. Thanks, Big Chu. And uh, to summarize, um, I'd say that we've dealt with uh, two very important principles, that is the socio-emotional sphere of influence, mm -hmm. as well as the teacher's role in her own professional growth. Uh, however, we should not forget a third point, which is that the informed teacher successfully creates a student-oriented uh, classroom by providing learning opportunities that are culturally relevant, those that are multidisciplinary, 
and transformational in nature. Uh, I cannot emphasize this enough because uh, the learner has to be exposed to the target language uh, through tasks that are challenging and tasks that encourage risk taking. Uh, we, we will now look at this diagram uh, on your screens in a moment uh, that will illustrate these uh, three points um, in a more um, accurate manner. As you can see on the screen, best practice involves um, the teacher, the learner, as well as the tasks, tools and content which are mediated. Now in a nutshell, best practice in the ESL classroom involves knowledgeable practitioners who work purposefully toward creating a supportive learning environment in the classroom. To provide a context for this theorizing and to, act, to show how uh, such definitions and principles of best practice may be realized in the classroom. Uh, let us now look at one important issue, and that is the issue of uh, student participation and how teachers can ensure active participation on the part of the students. Um, in examining our earlier definition of best practice, uh, student uh, participation embodies the active involvement of learners' ideas, of student-generated language, and thirdly, culturally relevant material. Uh, in this program, we will examine the practices of two teachers, Mr. Lim and Mrs. Gowrie. Uh, Mr. Lim and Mrs. Gowrie are master teachers at Malaysian primary schools. In a few minutes, you will see Mr. Lim and his students from the SJKC Sin Min in a garden atmosphere. Who can tell me the name of this flower? I, sir. Yes, Hisham? It is a sunflower. Very good, thank you. And, uh, Tekai, can you tell me the name of this flower? I am sorry, I cannot. Oh, it's okay. Uh, what about you, Jintek? What's the name of this flower? Is it a canna? Oh. Yes, you are right. It is. It is a canna. And where's the morning glory? Yes, young thing? This one, sir. That's the morning glory. Yes, this is the morning glory. Sir? Yes. Is this, is this the Dora? Oh no, that is not the Isora. The Isora is over there. Sir? Yes. What is the name of this small yellow flower? Oh, this is the Alamanda. The Alamanda. Cool tip, don't you think it's refreshing to see the um, class being conducted in the garden rather than a conventional classroom? Yes, it certainly was a change for me. Yeah, and as you can see uh, from the video clips, Mr. Lim is encouraging his students to participate in the lesson. And the, class is being, the lesson is being conducted uh, in the school garden um, amidst the trees, the plants and the flowers. Now, as you can see, what Mr. Lim was trying to do was he was using the trees, the plants and the flowers as a major source of content of his lesson. And what he did was he encouraged his students to look around, to observe and to label the flowers, which he wanted them to learn. And um, now he does this through a process called guided participation. Now that means that Mr. Lim uh, guides his students to actively participate in the lesson by talking about the flowers and by naming them orally. And uh, the students are led to use some of the language structures such as, um, is this the Exora teacher? And you see the students were able to pick up 
the uh, uh, model that the, the teacher um, uh, gave them earlier. And uh, the Kai, can you tell me the name of this flower? I am sorry, I cannot. Oh, it's okay. Uh, what about you, Shintek? What's the name of this flower? Is it a canna? Sure. Yes, you are right. It is. It is a canna. Sir? Yes. Is this, uh, is this the Dora? Oh no, that is not the Izora. The Izora is over there. Sir? Yes. What is the name of this small yellow flower? Oh, this is the Alamander. The Alamander. The, the important thing here is that the, there is communication between the student and, students and the teacher. Uh, you will see again now how Mr. Lim allows for student participation through a process of direct involvement. Uh, in a few moments, you will see how Mr. Lim's students first articulate the name of a flower and then they have direct access to the word card on which the name of the flower is written. And finally, they sing a song. Uh, which includes the names of all the flowers they've learned today. Let us now look at the screen for this episode. Next one, can you read this? Balsam! Very good. Who wants to hold the balsam card? All right, we need you to hold this card. And the next one is canna. Canna! Everyone say canna. Canna! Who is going to hold the... All right, you hold the canna card. And the next one is... Izora! Very good. Izora! Izora. Izora. We will let her hold the Izora card. Come, go. And last one, we have the sunflower, everyone. Sunflower. The sunflower. Sunflower. And who holds the sunflower card? Uh, you hold. You hold. All right. And we have all the flowers that we love. Yeah. Good, thank you very much. Mr. Lim has um, used a very interesting way to get the students directly involved by getting them to sing. Don't you think it's interesting? Yes, big too. Rather than the drills that we do most of the time, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, another dimension of student participation is evidenced in the way questions are used during interactions between students and teacher. Now, in this particular case, uh, interactive participation can be seen in the use of student-generated question as well as student responses to teacher-generated questions. I think what we would like to highlight here is uh, the fact that Mr. Lum um, carefully and meticulously expands the student's knowledge base in as far as the content of the lesson is concerned. Uh, you, you would notice that he models an approach whereby the students first learn about uh, names and labels and, and titles of flowers and then they learn about the flower and its color and its spelling and so on and finally they move on to a writing sequence whereby they actually have to move from the word level to the sentence level. Yeah, so um, let us move on to the next phase of Mr. Lim's class. Now the next few scenes will segment how Mr. Lim uses strategies for interactive participation in his classroom. Now notice how the teacher allows for choice through a series of steps. You will see that Mr. Lim first provides a series of statements that may be used as a model or guide for student-generated statements. Then he goes through the statements and then he clarifies the task. He then makes inquiries about what each group wishes to write, providing them with a choice. His students understand the nature of the task and proceed to write collaboratively. Now, in short, Mr. Lim has successfully guided the students' participation through interactive means. And the students' interactions with uh, the teacher, with the material, and with their peers 
allow them to actively participate in the task. Let, let's take a look at the video. Right. Cut for you here. All right. Can you see the word? Can you? Very good. I will put the cut here. And okay. this sentences, these sentences are about the elementer. So I will put the elementer here. All right. Now you listen carefully. I'm going to read the description to you once. The elementer is a pretty flower. It is yellow in color. Now you are going to write six sentences on a flower that you like. All right, group A. Which flower would you like to write about? Family. All right, very good. Come here, girl. Come here. Come and take the card. Come. All right, this is your card. And this is your card. And I'll give you a pen. Yes, Hisham. What flower would you like to write about? Sunflower. And the sunflower. All right, which is the sunflower? This one. All right. We will give you the card. And also a Manila card. All right. You must write six sentences. Can you write? Can you do that? Yes. Okay. Those at the back, please come forward and uh, write here. Come quietly, slowly. And these six pupils will go to the back there. Slowly, no noise. And those six at the back, please come forward. You can start writing now. We will give you uh, five minutes to write. All right. Pek Chu Haf, we have um, uh, seen uh, the process of direct involvement, active participation and student involvement in, uh, in, at work in Mr. Lim's classroom. In the next scene, you will see how another teacher, Mrs. Gowrie, successfully in allows for interactive participation in her classroom. Uh, let us look at the initial part of her lesson. So children, you can see that we have collected a lot of things, a lot of throwaway things. So I want you to use your creativity to create some useful things this morning. Can you do that? Yes. So now you can start. the uh, Twin Towers taking shape over there yeah. <laughs> and uh, don't you think it, the students look enthusiastic um, in uh, carrying out their uh, tasks? I mean an English lesson need not be um, a boring lesson whereby you sit behind a desk and you listen and you, 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 you are not actively involved whereas uh, what Miss Gowrie has done is she really got the students uh, um, involved in carrying out the activity. Yeah. 
Yes. Um, I, I think more importantly, uh, Ms. Gowri has decided to use various construction materials as a tool for direct involvement in a student's creativity. Uh, we will notice that students have the opportunity to do the following things. First, identify a model they would like to build. Two, they, would like, they, they are able to choose the materials that are suitable for the model that they'd like to build. And finally, they are able to think about the modifications, adjustments, and reformulations of the model as they go along. So when the Twin Towers are actually taking shape, uh, they have the opportunity to modify um, what the final product is going to look like. Uh, in this way, we find that Mrs. Gowrie involves her learner's creative spirit as well as encourages the collaboration in her classroom. After this, in a few minutes, you will see how Mrs. Gowrie uh, also gets involved in the lesson in a very direct manner. Uh, she shows her students how she too has created the model of a box and uh, notice how she carefully describes the procedures that she followed in making her box. Uh, let us look at this now. Now, I have also made something this morning to show you. I have made a compact disc holder using an empty box. Now, first, I cut off the top of the box and the front. Then I used these gift wrappers to cut and put trimming on the sides to make the box look more attractive. And I also cut out flowers from the gift wrappers and I have pasted around to make the box look more attractive. Then I used the top, the top that I cut off and I put it at the bottom to make it strong. Now the C compact disc, disc box is ready and I can keep my favorite compact discs in them. There you are. See? And I can put it on the table in my room. You see, Pekchu, the significant part of uh, Gauri's lesson and that presentation which she took part in just now is how it, is, it can be used as a supportive framework for her students to use language. Uh, the students will soon describe um, their own models to the rest of the class. And uh, the teacher has successfully demonstrated to them how learners can make something the way she has done herself and how they can then talk about it in class. Uh, let us look at uh, some of the students presenting their work to the rest of the class. Good morning, my fellow friends. Today, my creation is a submarine, and I have named it the Twinkle Submarine. To make a submarine, we need one big size bottle, just like the honorary bottle, three empty cans, some straws, and a bottle cover. The bottle cap. The f first one, we and a piece of plywood. First, we put the big bottle on the plywood and fix it with a cello tape. Secondly, we take the three empty cans and fix it at beside the bottle, like this. And and you put some cello tape to get it straight to the bottle. We put besides and on the bottle. In front the, in front. Also, uh, we can make the periscope. We stick the straw front of the in the front of the can. I do this fish using the um, envelope and old newspapers. The newspapers are in the envelope. I, I take some uh, cello tape to, to to do this. 
to do this. And I, I take some thread to, to hang it. Um, don't you think it's wonderful how the students are able to use the language in context? All right, um, and um, I think um, there are a few things here in this lesson which um, uh, needs to be brought up. And one, um, if you notice the first pair, there's two boys, they were presenting the submarine, I think it was, yeah? And uh, how when he was presenting the boy, when he was presenting it, he could do some self-correction. Right. Remember he said, um, okay, we use a bottle cover. And then mm -hmm. he thought people didn't understand. So he corrected himself, it's a bottle cap. You see, so it's, it's, it's very important there. And then the other thing I think what um, Gauri managed to do was to provide the opportunity for oral language use in the classroom, which is very important, all right, mm -hmm. if you want to learn language. And also, and, um, another thing that could come up from this activity is it could pave the way for a writing activity. The students could write down the procedures uh, uh, when creating their models, yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing that you can notice over there is that uh, interaction takes place at two levels. One is the social level where the students are talking among their peers, all right? And the other one is the cognitive le level. Mm -hmm. And you find that there is a very strong interconnection between the oral and the written form. So it mm -hmm. is important for teachers not to dichotomize the skills that they teach in the classroom. It doesn't mean that, okay, now this is an oral class, so therefore we're only going to do uh, speaking, that's it. Well, you can see that you can actually interact the skills together. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, so um, that's what I find interesting about Gauri's uh, uh, lesson. Thank you, Bikchu. Yes, uh, I quite agree with most of what you've said. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you have just witnessed two class sessions, uh, both of which actively involve student participation through a series of steps. Um, we, to summarize, uh, the effectiveness of Mr. Lim's lesson is presented in the strategies of reiteration, emphasis, repetition, reinforcement, and application. Uh, to talk about uh, Gauri's lessons in these terms, we will notice that a fair amount of modeling was used as well as a fair amount of language was used to think about uh, products and processes. Uh, both the teachers achieved this through various means. And what we talked about today, Pekchu and I, were, the means, the, uh, were means such as guided participation, direct involvement and uh, interactive participation. You will notice also that Mr. Lim also modeled the output before he got his students to write their own protocols. Uh, with this, we end our first episode of Best Practices in English as a Second Language Instruction. We hope that uh, the, the sessions that we have shown you would be helpful and that this would be an informative session. And uh, you will join us um, in, again during the next episode of Best Practices in English as a Second Language Instruction. Thank you.